Hey pottery peeps! So I'm going to show you real quick how to make one of these that we used at the art festival and they worked pretty good. Um, first time I've ever used them. Idea I had <laughs> like days before. I think I pushed them to be fired and glazed in time. I think I might have made them a week before. So really pushing it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and lower you down. I do have footage, not a lot of footage, of the art festival and uh, it was just an amazing day, and I'll, um, I'm going to actually having to do a voice voiceover on that, and I'll talk about that after I show you this. Okay, so I'll lower you down. Okay, it's another really bright day out here, so I'm getting, it's hard to see these screens when um, it's really bright. So what I did on these, um, I actually have a quilting ruler, of course I do, out in the studio. Um, Eventually I'm going to have to replace my quilting ruler. Um, but it works out really, really great in the studio because you can see through it. So you need to start with a straight line, just like you're quilting. So so I'm just going to square this up. It also works, quilting rulers, this works really well like if you're doing certain size platters or whatever. So I'm not going to square up that end. Once I've got a square or a square corner, then I can um, get going. So the measurement on these, let me just double check. They were three and a half inches by six. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure over first on this line three and a half inches make sure this one's straight that one's straight and just whoops don't move the ruler once you start cutting and then i'm just going to keep doing that i'm just going to actually i probably won't because i'm going to use this clay for something else so because i don't need to i've already got made like a dozen of them so and I did film when I was making them, but who knows where that went. <laughs> I'm just gonna, since I cut into that, I'm just gonna smooth that out. Reconnect that line that I cut. Okay. And this is B-Mix. These ones were done in porcelain, because I had porcelain. I've already morphed it by stretching it. I'm not too worried though. So, then I went along here and I measured out six inches. So I'm going to easily get two out of here. Oh, maybe three. And if I pull this just a little bit, I will definitely get three. Let me just measure this again. Six. Yep. So, and then, okay. And since it's got all these lines here, you can easily line it up on a straight, straight line and cut them. here oh, I forgot my sheet hold on just a second once again got started on a project without all my stuff so I took the sheet hold on let's tilt you just a little bit more okay I love working with the sheet. And I know a lot of people will work with plastic, but the plastic to me is so thin that it just bunches up and puts little wrinkles. So I personally, I mean the sheet will too if you're not careful, but the sheet's got a little bit more weight to it than plastic does. So I can just quickly come in here and smooth all my edges. You could decorate these. I used, um, I'll show you in a minute. I used um, 
the braid that is sold by MKM Rollers, and uh, it's one of my favorites. I use it so many things. It can go so many different. I do a lot of Celtic things, so it can go that way. It can go rustic. Um, I just really, really like it. So now that I've got those smooth, I actually used a ruler too. This clay is super wet and it's picked up texture and even though it looks like some red clay <laughs> from my table because I was working in the terra red. That's okay. All right. So I just came along, put the braid in there, across the top, across the bottom, just to give it some a little bit of decorative quality. You don't have to do this. Heck, they're yours. Do whatever you want. Do any type of decoration if you try this. It was helpful because um, we brought price tags thinking that we had enough. We did not, and we ran out of price tags, and we were so busy that there was no running to get price tags. So this, these came in very, very handy. And uh, when I get done with this, I'll show you another reason why they came in super, super handy. All right, let's start with this guy. So what I did is I took a ruler underneath that braid and just pushed it up. And then this is my stamp that says Hobble Creek Pottery. I just went ahead and pressed the stamp in there. Turn it around, do the same thing. Just um, gives it more stability so it can stand up. Always have to make sure it's going the right direction. Okay. So right now, this is what I've got. I've got my stamp going the right way. And now, you want to bend this. And don't just yank it, because clay, you know, doesn't like to be yanked. It likes to be seduced. So seduce it into that curve. Otherwise you might get cracking. I got cracking on a few of mine. I was able to catch them in time and save them. And then I will come and score just the bottom. This clay is pretty wet. So I just scored here and here. And then I will push them together. Clean off the little stress marks there from the clay being bent. It's pretty, you know, dramatic bend. So that's why you need to seduce it. And then um, sometimes if I smooth out my braid, I will just bring it in. So these are super simple. Super simple to do. And it was really nice to have um, customized price signs or um, I don't even know what you call these. I'm sure there's a name for them. It also, you know, at the end of the day, if you wanted to move something that wasn't moved, wasn't um, selling, you could write, uh, race the price that you'd written on there really easy and start over. So I'm gonna do these real quick and then I'll show you how they work. Let me see if I can remember how I did the business card. I'm gonna stretch him just a bit. 
I don't, everything is still packed. We have not unpacked anything. So if I did the business card, okay, so I'm going to actually, actually we'll do it this way. So I have this stamp. I have my logo and a couple of different stamps so that I can use it in different ways. Let's see. I just have to remember. I'm dyslexic, so when I'm doing things that are opposite, well, it just takes me a minute to think about it. So, um, we'll do this. And let's go ahead and put... Get out my lines. Then I'm going to come in here with the, the braid. Okay, so the way that I did the business card, here's the part that needs to hold. And it's fairly simple. I mean, you just kind of bend it till you get it the way you want it. And these were super handy because I could put my business card in a couple of different places. And I did notice that a lot of them were taken in those places. It wasn't just the checkout. So, that's, whoops, so you'll want to have it set up and then probably test it, or you might have to manipulate it. This clay's super, super floppy right now, as you can see. So I'll let it set out, stiffen up, and then make sure before I set it out to actually dry. You know what I actually might do? I've got a dry sponge. I'm going to put a sponge in there, kind of hold that together. But that is how you do the business card one. Let me move the board. And in the last candle opening, um, since I don't have the, and I probably won't get it unpacked. I'm not unpacking anything right now. We are actually starting the clay shed build Saturday. So I'm going to leave all the pottery right where it's at in their totes and let them um, just be safe, all packed up nice and neat in their totes since we're going to be doing construction. All right, so there you go. Some little business tools for your business doing shows. And let me show you how they work. So, one of the, we found a couple of different tricks. I'm going to actually pull you up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So, let's say um, mugs. There's a dry erase marker. Whoops. Dry erase marker. So, there you go. And if you didn't like that price, you know, and it needs to be higher. Or if it's a sale... There you go. Now, one thing that we also found out because we ran out of price tags and I didn't have a lot of these and so and some things didn't fit, you know, the some things just didn't fit the one price like the apple bakers did. Um, of course, certain mugs, you know, all fell into the same price, but um, certain things just didn't since we were out of um, price tags we found that we could write directly on the pottery and it just wiped right off. <laughs> so we went around and wrote all over the pottery. It was really fun. Now, um, one of you, I can't, I'm so bad with names. I'm really awful. My husband remembers everybody he's ever met. But one of you commented, this is a Sharpie, permanent marker. So we're going to find this out 
if it works because we did have um, some of these would wipe off when people handled the pottery, especially when we were writing on the pottery. So she said, um, she met, made a comment that you can write directly with a permanent marker and Windex and a paper towel should take it off. I'm just going to let it, we'll just see. Okay, so it doesn't rub off with the, so let's try some Windex because some of our, oh, how awesome is that? Thank you for that comment because we did have some problems with people picking up the mugs and or picking up certain things and if they handled or they put their fingerprint on them we ended up with a lot of that. So I don't think I think I would stick to the dry erase marker if I was going to write directly on the pottery but for these, I had to be careful where I touched them because the dry erase marker would, um, if I touched it, it smeared. So really great tip. If I can find the comment, I had so many comments on that, um, on that kiln opening. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to find the comment, but if I can find the comment, I'll put your name in here because that was a brilliant tip. Great to know. So these are just handy tools um, to help you with putting on shows and so forth. And then I am gonna work on, we did not get a lot of footage, we were swamped. It was an amazing day. We were, it was 11 to seven. We had people there at 10, 15 when we were still setting up. We were pretty much set up by that point, but nothing had been priced. And um, we were pretty much swamped until we got a little bit of a break in the afternoon, um, like around four. And I had made up um, just to give you an idea, I had made up flyers for our studio sale and I had a hundred of them and they were gone before four o'clock. And um, we were just really, really, really busy. It was amazing. And um, anyway, I'll get into more of that with the footage so you can see some of the footage. It's not the best footage. Um, most of it is pictures that Sandy took. Thank goodness for Sandy um, because between uh, talking to people, um, and I had, you guys, I had YouTube viewers come down from Idaho, Star Idaho, uh, Rock Springs, Wyoming, Colorado, all over the state of Utah. I mean, not just within my little, within 10 miles of me. Um, so it was so great to meet you guys. And um, I um, will talk about that probably a little bit more when we get into the footage. Anyway, so I'll let you go on this part. I'll get working on that. And since I am starting the clay shed on Saturday, I am going to go ahead and work on the video for this Saturday, which is seahorses. And I'll do apple bakers next Saturday. Okay? All right. We'll see you in a bit. Here is a still shot of our setup. Uh, I paid extra for um, a double booth and on a corner and with power so we could throw and it made all the difference. I want to direct you to my sign. <laughs> I had a lot of people walk into the booth just based on the fact that they laughed on, at my sign. Um, because we had the double booth and set up the way it was, we had great traffic flow. There was an um, in and an out. Nobody got stuck. A lot of times with these smaller um, 10 by 10, people don't even come in because there's too many people in there. Or people that are in there can't get out because there's people behind them. So this was a great setup. We divided it up with me on one side, Mickey kind of in the middle, and then Sandy over on the other end. Kate, at the last minute, her life went upside down. And so um, Mickey and I packed extra stuff to um, take Kate's space. So it still worked out really great. I made the uh, vertical displays that are clamped to the table uh, a couple of years ago out of just uh, two by twos. And they're hinged, and then I've got boards that uh, slide in, and I can get bigger boards or smaller boards. Um, they work great. They fold up, they store away really easy, and it helps to get to use that vertical space to get the pottery up off the table and up in the eye line where people can see it, where it can be the real star. Everything's also color coordinated with the black tablecloths and the black um, displays just to highlight the pottery which is what you want here's some still shots this is me of course 
and Mickey, she's such a rock star. And here is Sandy. She's just so pretty. She did a great job. This was her first show. <laughs> here are some of the displayed pottery that we had down there. Uh, we could have probably displayed it better, but it was selling fast enough that we were uh, filling in holes and moving things around. Um, there was no one thing. Well, ghosts and gnomes sold first. They were all gone pretty quickly. Here are my signs in action, which worked great. Definitely we'll be using them again. So we, this is basically all the footage that we had. I will need to do another video that goes in depth on what it takes to put on an art show, a successful one. I've actually never had a bad one. So fingers crossed, knock on wood, <laughs> that I never do. So the next sale that we do, um, October 14th here at the studio, I will grab some more footage and talk more in depth on how to run a successful uh, art festival or craft fair. Thanks for watching and I uh, hope you can get muddy and we will see you in the next one.